Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you all are. Um, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm the host of EdChat Interactive. And I just want to share my screen a second and show you we have uh, we have two more EdChat Interactives coming up or one more EdChat Interactive coming up this year. On Saturday, um, we have uh, Tagrid Seeley, who's a uh, reading supervisor in New York City. Uh, she has about 40 reading coaches that um, that work with her. And she's uh, provided a bunch of resources to help both teachers and parents teach remotely. And these are all free resources. So she's going to be talking on Saturday. What we try to do on EdChat Interactive is to have educators who are really doing innovative work and have them share what they're doing with other educators. These are always free. And uh, I want to thank you all for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about virtual quests. And virtual quests are a way to have students learn through exploration and creativity. The tool that we're going to be using is primarily ThingLink. And um, our leaders are Monica Joshi, who's coming to us from India, and um, Amanda Picard, who's coming to us from Scotland. So we have here the US, Scotland, and India represented as our, uh, as our hosts. And let me stop sharing. Um, ah, let me stop, stop sharing there. And uh, welcome, welcome. So um, I guess maybe each of you could start with a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Monica, why don't you start? Um, what do you teach? Or what do you teach teachers mostly? Yeah, so I'm from India, as you introduced. So I'm the IT head at the Satpal Mittal School. And uh, I'm surrounded with the teachers and students. And I love to, you know, kind of train teachers. Uh, so how they, they can uh, make their teaching pedagogy interesting with the students. And you've talked before um, on it. And you're it's always it's fascinated. My, I think, yeah, it's my uh, fifth EdChat interactive webinar here. Wow. And Amanda, <laughs> so it's, it's been, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead, Monica, sorry. Yeah, so it's it's been, you know, kind of great bonding with you. So after one of the webinar I finished, so then I approach, is, approach you that, okay, when is the next one? <laughs> <laughs> and with luck, your daughter will be here also because she is she's also remarkable. Yeah, so today also she'll be sharing her student perspective uh, after, you know, kind of Amanda finishes. So like she'll be telling uh, what's her experience with this tool mm -hmm. here. And Amanda, uh, you have quite a menagerie actually, I understand. <laughs> a little bit. So I'm Amanda Pickard. I'm teaching primary one at the moment. So in Scotland, that means four and five year olds. Um, children usually go to nursery around about three years old and then right up through to primary at 11 years old. So I've taught all of those ages. But at the moment, I'm doing the little ones. So four and five years old. I do have a menagerie. So I apologize now because the parrot will just whistle and tweet and we can't stop her. She's got a mind of her own. Um, I have a little budgie as well, a dog and three cats. And um, that's pretty much everything that's inside the house. Guinea pig, rabbits, chicken, and a couple <laughs> of fish. <laughs> but yeah, so digital technologies is my absolute passion and I'm completely delighted to be here. I have presented with um, ThingLink before, but this is my first um, Zoom webinar. So, and um, this is quite exciting for me as a new learning experience. So it's lovely to be here. And now I don't want to put any pressure on you, but you have an audience from all over the world. <laughs> and if you mess up, the whole world is going to shake. No, no pressure then. Thank you very much. But I love that <laughs> one person has got the camera on apart from the three of us. So hello. I'm not sure how to say your name. Is it Gurprit? Hello, you've got your camera on. So it's lovely to see a face. I love that. <laughs> Good. Okay, so I'm going to um, hand it over to the two of you and um, looking forward to learning. So, all right. So, I'll, I'll begin with the webinar. Yes, yes, please do. So, as uh, Ms. shared that uh, we, in the today's session, we will be talking mainly about Thingly. And then uh, uh, towards the end, we'll be uh, sharing about the app smashing also, Bitmoji. 
And then, uh, yeah, being a 3D Bear ambassador, I will be talking about how you can include 3D Bear also with the Thinglink. So without further ado, I'll just be quickly sharing the screen. Uh, before that, I just wanted to, you know, kind of draw your attention that uh, the teachers, what are they creating uh, the lessons today are basically uh, to motivate uh, their kids and uh, want to engage their students, uh, you know, kind of so that it can be a student centered learning. So uh, through Thinglink, uh, we'll just be uh, kind of draw your attention that how you can create the virtual uh, quest kind of scene where you can take your students where they cannot go to a virtual walkthroughs or a tour giving a student so that they can have the real world environments and uh, kind of situations that uh, would, uh, you know, otherwise be not be reach out there. So I'm just uh, sharing the screen here. Okay. So is, is the screen visible? Not yet, not yet. Ah, here it comes. Okay. It's just, it just, it says it started. It's not quite. Yes, there we go. Okay, we have liftoff. All right. So the tool which we'll be talking about is Thinglink. Uh, so it's very free and uh, very user friendly. It can, you know, kind of turn any image to an interactive graphic and will be able to create, you know, uh, will with the help of Thingling, we'll be able to create multiple hotspots on any image. And you can kind of put a lot of content into a small place. And uh, like if you want to uh, embed it onto other blogs or websites, Thingling uh, is easily able to be embedded can be easily shared and you can keep it to the closed group and you know uh, kind of share it to the public uh, publicly also. So uh, in, in the next few minutes Amanda will be sharing like how we can uh, share how, how we can make thinglings in any subject and for any grade level. Basically she will be sharing the examples or uh, in all the use cases from the classrooms for all these subjects and how you can, you know, make a thing link as a multimedia curriculum launcher. You can use it uh, to publish your students work. You can create interactive reports of your students. So it's entirely uh, the creativity of the teacher, how the teacher wants to use, not basically limited to the curriculum only. How, what are, what all extra things you can do with the help of Thinglink. And if I look at from uh, the administrative point of view, you can use Thinglink, you know, to communicate with your parents also. And uh, obviously, uh, it will be an, a one up and hand up, so it can be used for your professional development as well. And towards the end, uh, we'll be talking about how you can, you know, uh, using the app Smashing with the help of Bitmoji and 3D Bear and many more applications like 3D Bear, you can link with the blog, with your YouTube tutorial, YouTube videos and all. So that, that will be discussing and lots more. As I always discuss that, you know, your lesson has lots many parts, introduction, development, summation, evaluation and reflection. So it's not, a, not about that you have to stick it okay, you have to have an introduction only through this. So it is kind of a virtual basically library where with the help of which you can carry on your lesson and can use it in any part of the lesson and can carry out your whole lesson with the help of Thinglink. So I uh, just wanted to say that uh, Thinglink is a thinking link actually, which joins all the four C's. So uh, for the four C's, if I talk about, it is, you know, uh, creativity, critical thinking and communication and collaboration. So I'm just going to share something, uh, stopping share and sharing uh, a thing link with you. Okay. So when I talk about curiosity, 
So it's like you can use any image used in a thingling, and you know uh, the thingling should get the students' att uh, attention uh, so that they can make them curious uh, about the content. So that's what curiosity is about. If I talk about communication, so anyone can use the thingling to get any idea across to a wide audience, whether as a presentation to a class or an interactive and exhibit, you know, uh, art exhibition or communication with your stakeholders. When I uh, told you about that, uh, you can use it to communicate with your parents also, or you can use it for publishing it, publishing it on the web also. So, and when you are collaborating, your children can collaborate here on the thing link also. So one student can upload a picture, another student can, you know, add links, you, the other can add text, video, and other students can, you know, remix that picture with all new links. And, you know, when it's talk about the context, so thingling can be used with the real world photos and that the students creates. So you, you know, have the uh, power either to localize or kind of globalize the uh, context with the help of thingling. And you can kind of, you know, have the maps, graphs, charts, diagrams, or any other picture can be made into infographic. So, you know, kind of enhancing the thematic approach, that's very, very helpful with the help of Thingling. And if you see, you know, with attention, if you can see what I was showing you, uh, all the four Cs. So what presentation I was showing you that I have prepared with the help of Thingling only. So, how you have to use it in your classes, how you can take it forward. I over to you, Amanda now. She will be, you know, showing the beautiful use cases from her classroom. When I saw, I just fell awe with that. Okay. And couldn't, you um, know, stop myself and the others hour, to so I'm on listen that. Over to you, Amanda, <laughs> to share your examples order. with that. Okay, it is just lovely to be here. Um, just a little bit of background. I only discovered ThingLink in, I think, March this year. And as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, we were offered an upgraded account. So um, I just had a little look. We went into lockdown. I was teaching primary one. Um, and at that point, lockdown happened at perfect time for my class because all of my children were able to log in to our, our um, national site, which is Glow Glow. And through Glow, we've got Office 365. So um, our whole school was using Teams to communicate with the children at home. So just at the point of lockdown, my children were able to log into Glow and then into Office 365 and then into Teams. But if you have any experience of Teams, it's not it's not very pretty for little ones. It's not too difficult for them to use. They can use it, but and we were using it, but it's not the best thing for little tiny ones. Um, so I felt just as a couple of weeks had passed that my little ones were struggling a little bit to engage with what I was doing on Teams. So ThingLink came along at the perfect time for my little ones. And I'm going to show you where I started really and how it grew from there. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen and remember to click on all the extra bits and click on share. And oh, I don't know why this is going here. I don't know a second. Um, like it's about to start sharing. Should and it, here we go. It there? Yes. Fantastic. So, um, this is a thing link I've actually created for our session tonight. That is my parrot in the background, I'm so sorry. Um, so I just created this as I was talking to Monica, I knew that you were focused on the four C's. So I tried to sort out my thing links that I've created roughly into these kind of categories, although there is a bit of a, a kind of crossover. So the first thing that I did with, um, wait till I find it, my little tiny class, uh, I think it's here. This is one of the first thing links. And I was trying to come up with a creative way to engage my little ones that would re-engage them during lockdown. It was a difficult time and we were all at home and we couldn't go anywhere as any, everybody in the world was in that same position. So I came up with this and it's a very, very basic thing link. Here it is here. And it was about building sentences for my little ones. So I 
created a Bitmoji classroom and then I got busy with ThingLink. I uploaded it as uh, an image to ThingLink and I tried to make it as simple as possible. So um, I connected some. We have written lots of sentences in class, so you should be able to write one of your very own. Have a look at these examples. I had a big bag of pens. I am a cat. I can see a log. Your task this week is to write out a sentence on a piece of paper or your jotter. So I'm just going to close that just now, but you get the idea. It was basically so that the children could choose when they did their work at home. Parents and families could do it to, as they could. it suited them. Um, and it was something a little bit different. This is where the magic kind of happened for my class. These five instructions, and I'll just show the first one for you. Hi, Primary One Brilliant, Travis here. My mum says you are all brilliant at reading and writing sentences. So that's what she wants you to focus on this week. Reading and writing sentences. I can't wait to read what you've written. So that's my dog. That's Travis. And Your that dog can magical. talk? <laughs> yes, of course. All dogs can talk. Didn't you know? Um, so that was the magical bit. The parents, my family, the feedback was just overwhelming it just captured my wee ones imaginations and it just kind of reinvigorated their love of learning their, their curiosity and they just all got busy so it really had a massive impact on my little class and I just tried to put a few things that we have in my class anyway so these are the actual posters that I have in my class these are our actual rules and um, I have this teddy bear in my class um, I do not have this dog in my class, but I was just trying to give them a, a kind of feeling that we were still at school, we were still primary one brilliant, and we were still going to be learning. So I just added in a couple of other bits and pieces. There was... Click on the blue button and have fun singing this brilliant song. There was links to um, YouTube videos. There was links to things that they could log into. Click on the blue button log into Education City and enjoy playing some games. Now, it was um, brilliant because I could upload my audio straight into ThingLink. So they didn't need me to explain anything. They didn't need mum and dad to read anything. So I recorded my voice telling them exactly what to do. But the other brilliant thing is if I had put a lot of text in this tag, we have Immersive Reader built right into it. And there isn't anything here. It's just a title, but it could actually read it to them. I love that about ThingLink. It just makes it so accessible. Even when my wee ones, all of them, some of them were reading really, really well, but not all of them were. So it was a really brilliant way of giving them independence and engaging them in their learning. So it was just amazing. So that's kind of where I started from. Then I just caught the thing link bug and and everything I do right now is can I thing link that is that thing linkable how can I thing link this so I'm going to show you a few examples and um, from each category that I've kind of put together and um, so we'll start with collaboration and this is actually um, something that my children this year in my class they spent ages building this structure they had loads of things to say about it so I took the photo and I uploaded it into ThingLink and then I left ThingLink in the edit mode and all of these tags that you can see were added by my class. They chose their tag, they placed their tag on the photo and I just left them to it. And that was it. I literally just quickly showed them. And so this is brand new children this year, this session. Most of them were four, a couple of them were five. I'll just play a couple for you. Have a party. So I handed my iPad over to them and they recorded their voices. The zebra, the zebra likes to eat grass. And I just thought this was just a brilliant way. I like the, I like the roof and um, the walls and I like the tiger and, and the big long thing. And I like in the elephant. So I don't think there was a child in my class who did not actually contribute to this thing link. And we shared this on Twitter with parents. And I, yet again, the parents are just blown away with how amazing this is. It just really gives them 
something to keep in touch with in school because we can't have parents in the school building at the moment. So that's been really difficult. And we normally would have had them in all the time. So I can share things like this. We've done loads of these. And now it's a normal thing in my classroom for my children to come along and say, Mrs. Picard, can you take a picture? Can we make a thing link? And I do, I just take a picture, upload it for them, hand over my iPad and they get busy with building their own thing link. So that is one little example. And if they were at home with their parents, you could probably still, could you still just have a picture and have them from home label yes, these I things? Could. Yeah, I haven't done that yes, but, um, yet, but I absolutely could. They can have their own login and they can we can all contribute to something. So if we all went back into lockdown, I would set up those accounts for them. I could share a photograph um, I would probably do share a photograph in OneNote and then they could a link to the thing link and then off we go, build it together. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's such an easy tool, but such a powerful tool to use. So those are children at four and five years old and it is no problem to them. It is just a matter of quick two minute showing them how to do it and and off they went and it literally was can we just get on with it please now mrs pickard yes okay off you go so i didn't have any other input and um, this is a lesson that we did actually it was after halloween so we had um, a pumpkin in the class and we had scooped out and carved it for halloween and then we saved all the seeds so this was a thing like that i created but i wanted the children to actually tag the image in the correct place so I set this up on my in fact I set it up on a dual flip I have this amazing new projector that projects onto my floor in the classroom and um, you'll maybe see it on twitter anyway but it, it projects onto the floor so my Promethean panel is quite high for my little ones and they're always trying to reach up to things so I projected this onto my floor left it in edit they clicked on this button listen carefully and follow these instructions Click the pencil to edit the thing link, then move each of the number tags to label the correct parts of this flower. And, and that's what basically what I did. I let, they just clicked on the pencil and, oh, I can't do it like that because I'm not in that particular one. Um, let me go back to where it is. It went into the edit mode and they could literally drag each of these tags to the part of the plant. Where is the stem? So I use it as a kind of wee assessment. We had done a lesson about um, the parts of a plant and we had done loads of things. We had planted our seeds and they just dragged to the tags to label the plant. This is obviously a sunflower and not a pumpkin flower, but or a pumpkin plant, but uh, it was the same sort of idea. And then they clicked on this, which is a tour tag and that was the correct answer. And then I gave them lots of other little tags and I sent this one home for homework so they could watch a little video about plants that were growing. There were things to do at home. So I know how much kids must really love multiple choice quizzes. So they like this even more, right? Absolutely. It just <laughs> gives them so much choice, so much independence, the confidence. I had one wee girl who came in to primary one this year and she literally didn't say a word for the first week and then so I, I just put her in charge of the thing link and she is the chattiest most confident wee person ever the difference is in her is incredible she's just blossomed excuse the pun <laughs> and then we did the the life cycle of a pumpkin so I did sort of tie it into our pumpkin seeds but yeah this was fantastic and it's such an easy thing Mums and dads and families that don't have to find any resources. They don't have to go searching on anything. I can link exactly the videos on YouTube I want them to have a look at. It, it's just amazing. So, yeah, that's just another example. Um, this was another one of a couple of the girls who had spent time building this structure. And again, I just handed over the iPad. They added in their links as they wanted. And then we shared it. So I now have my own blog for my class. So I just share this, the thing links on my blog and mums and dads and families can go and have a wee look and click on it. And, and it's lovely because I'm sure like many children, the children go home at the end of the day, exhausted. What did you do at school today? 
nothing I can't remember. But this way I can make sure that mummies and daddies and aunties and uncles and grannies and grandpas can all find out what they've been doing. And just amazing, just absolutely brilliant. The other thing that's really good about getting the kids to do these tags, they're recording their voice. So I can hear um, the development in their speech and it's a really good way of a kind of side assessment that I can um, actually track throughout um, primary one. So it's been a really handy tool for me as well as being a brilliant tool for the children to collaborate on and share with mums and dads and talk about their learning. It's also a way of me to check in and see if they're picking up new vocabulary, how their speech development's going on. Amazing. I just absolutely love Thing Link. And there was a, a suggestion in the chat that uh, you could either you or your kids could build a, a tour of the school or a tour of the classroom. Yes. yes, I have a tour of my classroom, actually. Um, it is the last thing link that I shared in lockdown with my class. And um, just before we went up, we broke up for the summer holidays. I had quickly taken, um, I think it's in here. I think it's this one, a 360 degree photograph um, using Google Street View of my classroom. Um, and excuse the mess, it literally was, we went into lockdown and I literally quickly took a quick photo. Um, it's not perfect because I did it on Google, Google Street View. You can buy really expensive cameras to do this, which are amazing quality. Um, and I just took a picture of our classroom and I put tags all the way around um, the classroom. And I just sent it out as a bit of work, a bit of last minute things to do for the last part of the term. So the first thing I had it sat here and I had a little video of myself. I'll show you a short clip. Hello boys and girls. Oh my goodness me, can you believe we are in the last week of primary one brilliant. I can't believe it. So this one had a huge impact. Mom, families love this, the kids love this. They hadn't seen their classroom for three months. So this was massive. This was really, really important to them. And they literally just clicked and tagged different things. Every single one of us is in a house. And just to give them a little reminders, this is our, my teaching desk that I had at the time. So I put in a song that we had learned, just lots of things I just shared that we had done across the whole year, right up until March, that they might have forgotten about or their classroom. And uh, this had a massive, massive impact. So throughout lockdown, I had 25 children in my class and it is quite hard to keep all the children engaged all the time. But regularly, I probably had about maybe 14 or 15 children um, tuning in, signing into Teams, doing their assignments, but this one, the word got out and literally, I think only one child did not log in to Teams this week to pick up this assignment to actually have a look at their classroom. Uh, yeah, this just- there were, there were two questions. Uh, one was uh, how you took the 360 photo. Did you use a 360 camera or did you use an app I on your- I used a free app, Google Street View. Mm -hmm. And I didn't um, publish it um, publicly. I just downloaded the photograph. So you literally stand and I turn around the circles, I don't know how many times. It's very easy to use. It, there's a little dot on your screen and you just move and fit the little circle around the dot until you've literally taken a bubble photograph, a 360 degree photograph. And then I just downloaded it to my camera. Um, and it looks like a long stretched out weird photograph. Mm -hmm. Uploaded it into ThingLink and ThingLink just made it this 360 degree environment. Um, so it literally was easy peasy. It didn't cost me anything. Um, and you can see that the stitched together bits are not perfect. There's a couple of things that are not quite perfect here. It's not quite perfect. And that's just because it's not a 360 degree camera that I used. And then um, the, the second question was the, um, the hot spots. They appear you know, like that plus that in, right in front of us, it's, it's small. Can you change the size of those? Or um, those no, locked in. the size of them. Um, some of the so I these are these are standard tags within ThingLink, and um, but this is a custom tag. So there's loads of place online where you can get free 
key cons and tags and as long as it's an svg file mm -hmm. um you can upload it into thing link and um some of the ones that i've customized are tiny and some this one's not so great because it's kind of see-through um and this one's also a customized one so this one kind of stands out but if you see if i sit still they pulse a little bit so that's an option in thing link to either put the pulse on so you can see where they they're sort of blinking or you can turn that off so i usually keep it on because it's easier to spot mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the beauties of thing link because i have i do know other people who are using bitmoji classrooms with other apps, for example, PowerPoint or Google Slides, and you can put in a, a live link, but you have to know where that is in the PowerPoint to know where to click. Whereas mm -hmm. in Thing Link, you can actually see the blinking tags. So it makes it so much more obvious. So this is another custom tag. My goodness, me boys. Memories. Girls, I can't. That was our oh, that was our that's our mask there. I cannot believe that we have reached our final week. That was our classroom mascot thanking your cleaner for cleaning our classroom throughout the year. So literally, some of these are slightly bigger. And um, this is another custom one, it's slightly smaller, but you can't change the size of them yet. I mean, ThingLink are amazing. So I'm constantly um, making suggestions. Can I change the font? Can I do this? Can I make it bigger? Can so I literally pester ThingLink a lot to get what I want. <laughs> mm. um, so they're always doing updates. So maybe one day we'll be able to do that. But that's my that's my classroom that I sent to them um, as a tour of the classroom. I have seen amazing school tours, um, which are on Twitter as well, which are 360 degrees. Absolutely unbelievable. I did a 360 degree school tour for my best friend's school. Um, so these are a great use, a really, really good use of ThingLink, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, what else can I show you? Uh, please stop me if I'm taking too much time, but I'm going to continue. Um, this one here with communication, this was, um, I don't know if you've heard, making thinking visible skills. So this is a thinking routine, and this is me just pondering. I have a wee ponders occasionally about how I can use ThingLink. And this was me thinking, how can I ThingLink uh, making thinking visible thinking routine? That's quite a mouthful. Um, so I just came up with this as a kind of test. So this is the thinking bit, telling you what you need for this routine. And then this is the thinking. And I actually took a little screen video of 3D um, heart working. And I effectively what you would do is you would just in, break up the children into small groups, get them to write down everything they know about what they can see here. And that's the first part of the think. The think I think it's a C think wonder maybe maybe I've done this in the wrong order um, or no it's a think puzzle explore this one uh, and then this would be the puzzle bit what questions or puzzles do you have and on to the last one would be explore um, how can we explore these puzzles from where what sources so that was me kind of pondering how it was possible to use a making thinking visible routine and then I just put in the last wee bit was share report out to everyone, focus on the puzzles, review responses. So that's not something that I've used with my class, but it was just something that I was trying to think of for older classes or maybe my own little ones, but a different topic. So I was just kind of wondering and pondering how else I could use um, thing links. So that was one of the ways. Um, that's a thinking routine, that's my class. Um, this one here, was about communicating with parents. So it was International Dot Day um, this year. And my class did lots of things about dots and they did artwork. So they actually did artwork on little canvases. And then I took photographs of those canvases and then put them into a kind of virtual classroom. And then I got the children to record their voices. And then we shared it with families. And this was another one that got a massive positive response for families and I just love listening to how the children describe their artwork. I made orange by mixing yellow and red. And they so every single child had their artwork on here. This was our virtual gallery. We shared it on Twitter. We shared it with families. We tagged um, International Dot Day. 
this got an amazing response. And I, this is one of the ones that I'm really, really happy with. I just think it's wonderful. A brilliant way to share the children's work when we can't have families in to school to see it. I imagine the Reynolds must have really flipped when they saw this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did get a response. It was definitely a like and a share. So that was lovely. And I think that's a really kind of real world application where the children can get their own artwork out there and it's acknowledged as being amazing by people who've actually, authors have, have written the books that they've been studying. So absolutely loved it. And this is another 360 degree tour. And this is, um, in my school, this is my classroom, same classroom, but slightly different, um, sharing it with the parents, because obviously we can't have mummies and daddies in at the moment. And I put a few tags in here and I got the children um, decided where they wanted to talk. And they were explaining what this. So a bed and keyboard, noise and wire houses, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're members. So we've got the children who have like sort of introduced different parts or different areas of our classroom to families at home, so families can see, imagine what the classroom's like. I'm putting all your stuff in that you've got for me, your teacher, right? Our teacher called Mrs. Pickard. And, and like these, these are called cupboards, and they like to put your stuff in that you get from the teachers. So I just got the kids to do a little bit of an introduction to our class. You can see that this 360 degree photograph's not quite as good as my original. I might have to take this. And again, that's another great thing about ThingLink. It is so easy to swap out your base image. It takes no time at all change image and it does it. I don't need to change any tags. The tags all stay where it is. The reason behind this was, there was a few reasons. One, to share the classroom with families at home. And two, my school um, is 150 years old last year and we are moving school buildings. So at the end of this term, in fact, in two weeks, we are having pack up the whole school and we're moving school buildings. So we wanted to share our classroom that we started off primary one in and then we're going to do another tour of our new building in our new classroom to share uh, with the parents as well, because obviously we still can't have parents in. So I think this is a really lovely way. And I've just added in a few more tags. And as we go along, the children are coming and speaking to me about different parts of the classroom. And I've just filmed them, added in the tag, easy peasy to share with the families. Here's one of my colleagues standing talking. <laughs> there we go. Another amazing use of Bing Link. Um, so I will go on to my next curly kiff. I teach primary one, it's a curly kiff for me. Um, here we go, creativity. Um, I showed you that one. Here is, let me see, another one of my lockdown lessons. Um, this is another one of my pets that um, presented this lesson. This is Herbert's Great Outdoors and Yes Cats Talk. Hello primary one brilliant boys and girls, welcome to the great outdoors. This is my favourite place to be and as you can see I have signposted different places for you to explore. Have fun! So I literally, I did have my, there's my little emoji and I did put in something about myself but I wanted to give the children choice about what they were learning that week that I shared this one. So I did uh, an area for literacy, health and wellbeing, numeracy, science and art. And I didn't expect all my children to do all of the work that I set during lockdown. I wanted to give them choice. I wanted them to be able to choose what they did, what they completed, when they did it. And um, I think this was a really, really good way of doing it. So I'll just quickly, we'll just go and visit literacy. And here we go. There I am sitting on my toadstool and um, different tags. That was obviously a musical one. This is a book one. And I just put tags all over the place. And again, Herbert. Um, Aha, I see you found your way to literacy. Now, this is something that's really pretty tricky for me. It's not easy for me to hold on to a pencil or a crayon or chalk. I've got no thumbs. I've only got paws. But anyway. So I just, uh, the kids love this and it really did make a difference. So I had lots of engagement, lots of assignments, lots of uh, work completed, which was the purpose for me as a teacher. I was just really keen to keep the children engaged and I didn't want anybody to disappear. I wanted them to still feel that they were part of our classroom 
and uh, they had something to contribute. So uh, another a brilliant, brilliant use of ThingLink. I just love this tool so much. So and, uh, and one of the comments from I hope uh, from uh, Neha is that you know using something like this to sum up a um, a topic is it would be a, a, a great application. Absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing that you can't do in ThingLink. Mm -hmm. No age group, no subject, no topic, nothing. Um, you know, I'm already thinking about how can I use this for assessment. My one about um, labeling the plant, that was a part of an assessment. Mm. Uh, introducing a topic uh, for, you know, using and making thinking visible. It's, it's just incredible. So lots and lots of ways to use this. Um, this is- Well, and I know Monica is gonna be talking about different mashups but it seems to me well gene brought this up are you using chatter picks for the talking animals or what are you oh, using no, i'm not actually i'm using a, an app that i bought a few years ago and it literally is the best five pounds i've ever spent in my life i just do i bought it to amuse myself and my mom at the time and it's called my talking pet um and there's a little bit more chatter picks is amazing and i would have used it if i didn't have my talking pet um, but my talking pet gives you a bit more um, power so you can move the eyes in the right place you can make the mouth a different shape and um, you can set the top of the head and the chin and the, the side of the face so it just gives you a bit more um a bit more a few more options than chatter picks which is also awesome um but yeah this is this thing like that i've got here is the big piece of work that i put together over the summer holidays actually and what my idea was this really started with teaching phonics. We've got videos and we've got tasks and we've got this website and that website. And I wanted to pull everything together to one place so that I could use it to teach with. I could give it to the children to practice with. I could send it home for parents to use. Um, nobody needs to log into anything. So my idea was this is my classroom and I would have a different area for each subject or topic. So I started off thinking about phonics. So if I click on this tour tag, I go to my phonics poster and every single phonic sound has another tag. So most recently we were doing, ooh, we did ooh this week and it goes to the ooh poster, the banner. And then I have I made an introductory video on Flipgrid, which is so easy to use. And I just embedded it in here to introduce the sound. Um, this is another embedded um, sway. Here I just go through everything, all the teaching points for this sound. Um, and then I've got some videos from YouTube, Geraldine the Giraffe. Um, another video from YouTube, which is called Alpha Blocks different ways to form the letter. Um, the big thing that I added in here is this keyboard. So I teach digital keyboard skills or digital skills as I'm teaching phonics. So every child has a copy of this keyboard, which is blank. And then we have the one which has got capital letters on it. And we try and find what color of key the sound is on what number that we could go to. So we use the number row as a key, as an address. So today, this week it was O, go to, it is light blue, go to number nine, down two rows. And then we just go over here and we can check. And then I have the same keyboard massive on my wall and we stick a little wooden O on the right key on the wall. And that is why um, already all of my wee ones can log into our computers in school and log into Glow and log into anything I give them. So they've all got their own username and password to log into things. And it's just because I think um, I've just taught it as part of phonics. And then the last little one is if I sent this home, ideas for mums and dads to do at home to practice sounds and phonics. Just a few ideas. So that is my phonics. So I started with just the idea of I want to teach phonics and I'm building this as we speak. So it's not finished. It is a work in progress. Go to numeracy and numeracy just consists of lots and lots and lots of different websites and different tools to help with numeracy. Um, this was about teaching numbers. 
So similar sort of idea to phonics, I had different sways, videos, number formation to teach them. Um, so that was numeracy. Um, my recent one is over here in art. This is a new area that I've started building. And this has been really brilliant. So in my art, this is actually expressive art. So art, dance, drama, and music. But in art, I've got a map of the world and it was about looking at artists from around the world. So I think we did this one recently. So I took a picture of this piece of artwork and then I just add in tags, questions. What do you see? What does this make you think about? How does this make you feel? What does this remind you of? And then I had some information about the artist and there's a video about this um, artist in the magic garden and then a little to-do list. So my idea is I can use this to teach but I can also use it to give to the children to use and families at home to use as well. So this is the, this is the big piece of work that I'm working on constantly at the moment. I just keep adding and adding and adding to it. So if anybody's got any ideas, please send them my way. Um, oh, let me go back there. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so that was about me trying to be creative and trying new ways of um, teaching um, for my kids. So let me go down to the last bit, critical thinking. Um, so these are just new ones and I'm just kind of trying to use ThingLink in a different way. And this is uh, a little bit about practice and a little bit about assessment. So this was about climbing the doubles ladder. And again, I had this projected onto my floor so my little ones could um, reach this. And all they had to do, so this, this is a new update, the thing link called conditional transitions. So they click on here and they have to answer this sum before they can get to the next bit. So they have to click on the answer and it takes them to the next one. And then they have to click on and answer it and go to the next one. And um, so, and it goes all the way up. Uh, gosh, I had to think about that one there. Um, I'll try and go quickly so you can see the last part of it, which is the bit that they love the most. It goes all the way up to, we were teaching doubles. Oops, there we go. Um, all the way up to double 10. And although we've used this in my class a few times, my little ones this year love this, so they keep asking for it just so they can get to the last bit and they can have a bit of a celebration and it's music to dance to, which I shall not let you listen to. But uh, that's that's that one. So I've got um, a doubles, um, I'll just go straight back here and click on here. Um, that was all about climbing the doubles ladder. And then I've also got one about phonics, which was about building words. And they had to actually type in what that was. So they needed to get to the next one. They needed to click, actually type in the word, what is this? Um, and then, so some of them would have put in hat and it's not the right answer. So then they had to go back and think, what is it? It's a cap. So it's about introducing new phonic sounds to the, the children. So that is just another way of using it. Um, and the last one, what did I show you here? Can I really? This is just another one of my lockdown classrooms and it was about the counting classroom. Another one of my pets doing... Hello, primary 1B, it's Hobbs here. That's Hobbs doing his little bit. And again, it was about just practicing counting, lots of maths and numeracy, lots of games. And, and I have this up in my classroom pretty much every day so the children know that they quite like this game down here. Before, before and after. Oh. Is any and I've given them instructions. So they don't need me to around at all to tell them anything because they can just work it out. They can listen to me or they can use immersive reader. So that's just a few things that um, I've done. Um, I was just showing uh, Mitch and Monica this one that I'm working on at the moment, which is an idea to uh, differentiate tasks. If I was sending this home, um, there's nothing in it at the moment. I was just thinking up um, how I could do this, send this home and let the children pick if they want to stick at this level 
which is nice and spicy or a little bit trickier or the trickiest level. So that's just something that I'm, I'm sort of developing at the moment and trying to get my head around how I'm going to do that. So I think that's going to be a homework thing link and then the children can choose what level that they um, complete their homework. So I have yeah, literally- Kind of a before. differentiated learning. So the students can kind of pick at the level that they want to learn. It. Exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, just to practice or as an assessment. Yeah. So um, I think I've probably talked and used up all the time. I'm really, really sorry. But once I get starting talking about ThingLink, I don't know when to stop. So um, I shall stop sharing now and pass it back to you. Thank you very much. Those were loads and loads of examples, Amanda. I think uh, the audience has a lot of takeaways, you know, kind of use it in their classrooms. So you, you use a uh, wonderful, you know, kind of background, a kind of a bit moji setup uh, for creating uh, the backbone of your thingling. So I'll just be telling the audiences are, uh, uh, you know, kind of people who are attending the webinar, how you can create the Bitmoji section and then how you can create the uh, hotspots also, uh, you know, on the thingling. So I'll be just quickly sharing the screen. Okay, is the screen visible? It's just coming up. It's not quite, it says you, it started, but it's still black, but it's, there it is. Good. Okay. So I'll just do a slideshow so that I quickly show it up. Okay. So uh, it's, uh, you know, kind of that bit, Bitmoji and the setup that Amanda has made in all her slides, it's very easy. You can make it in with the help of the Google Slides. All you have to do is you just need to go into your Google Slides. Uh, what you have to do is uh, you kind of change the background first and then choose any image of your choice. And so uh, I just take, take, a, take an image of the wall floor and uh, I'm just selecting uh, this image. And after that, selecting the image, you can, you know, play a lot of player around with that image. So I sort of did not like the background of the image. So what I did, I just inserted a, a shape here and then I removed the, you know, borders of this image by clicking uh, on the you know border color and then i remove the border to move the border to transparent and then i i'm going to fill the colors into the uh, shape so sort of that it should be colorful now the next thing is uh, you have to insert you know the images in to make the class this uh, bitmoji and the graphic colorful so always remember when you have to, you know, uh, insert the images, the images have to be the transparent images so that I am taking a transparent whiteboard image here. So we have to search with the help right, by writing transparent whiteboard. So uh, select any, any image from here by, by writing whiteboard. So I'll just insert and, you know, kind of crop the image or uh, size the image as per the choice, uh, as per the requirement. Okay, and then, you know, kind of crop it and then insert any flower pot, any board, any window, the sofa, the way you wanna you want your classrooms uh, set up to look like, you can, you know, sort of do that way. So, okay, I'm now inserting an image of a window so I'll just be doing that quickly here by writing transparent window and, you know, to just create that. Okay. So just resize it and then taking a out, so outdoor scene and just taking any of the scene of your choice. Okay. So like that. And then, uh, the next part is to, you know, send it backwards. And then next is how you can 
add a bitmoji so you can have various type of bitmoji there's it's it's an app which you can when you have signed up in google chrome so you create an account on bitmoji and add it in the extensions as bitmoji so it is automatically added so whichever you know kind of bitmoji you need a pose a text or any any ways i mean like sitting on a sofa or which whichever so you can you know kind of select and uh, can insert it and add any colorful you know to create your classrooms image background image and then can download this image as png or jpg and then we can insert it in thingling and then we can add our hotspots on the you know uh, the thingling so to add the hotspots as i told you that uh, the thingling is so user friendly and it's very easy to create even a student can create that so i have one of my student here so she will be quickly telling you about how you can add these hotspots here so i'll just be passing on the control to her so that she can come and uh, you know kind of tell you the uh, how you can add the hotspots here So I think, Amanda, you also, you probably find it easiest to use something like Google Slides or whatever to assemble. Ah, oh, there's Namia. Yeah, I've used, um, I've actually used PowerPoint, I've used, oh, sorry, I've used PowerPoint, I've used, PowerPoint, I've used Google Slides, I've used Buncee, I've used Photographs, I've used G, JPEGs, I've used PNG files, I've used everything. Namia, welcome. And you're, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, so can I start sharing? Sorry, you're you're the boss. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just start it. Are you able to view my screen? Yes. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Namya Joshi, and I study in Grade Eight in Sapal Middle School, India. And today I'll be sharing with you the how you can create a thing link. So. I'm working as an intern with one of the companies and they told me to design a website. So I just made one of the thing link in form of website for them. And they actually accepted that rather using the website. So it is like, you can make it really interesting and it looks really good. So you just have to go to thinglink.com and you can create an account. Um, you can also sign in with your Office 365 ID if you're not using the Google ID. And after you're signed in, this is what you can see. Now to create a thing link, you have this option here. Just a second. Then you have four more options. So the first option is to upload an image, video. Or you can also upload a 360 video or an image. So I'm going to upload an image and show you how it look like. Just a second, it's loading. You can show the created one in there. I think it's hung. Can you just give me a second? Because it's hung, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of lot going on on the computer right now, isn't there? I have chosen this and now it will open it for you. I, I don't think we see it. Uh, you can't see my screen. We see your screen, but it's still the upload image. Yeah, it's still for me as well. I don't know why. It's like creating and it's going to the editor right now. I hope you can see it now. Yes. Paris. Okay. 
So now when you're done by opening the image, you have certain options here. So the first one is to add tags. So as you have seen many thing links right now and just teach you how you can add those. So click upon this blue icon and then you can add four kind of tags. So the first one is add text and media, add text label, add content from website, or you can also create a tour. So I'm gonna add text and media first and I don't know why it's hung again, just a second. Yeah, so I'll add text and media. So in this basically you can add text and media. So in that media you can either add an image or a video. So I'm going to add two images. So it will be kind of like a slideshow, but it wouldn't have any animation in it. So here's the first and now I'll add one more. There you go. This is the second one. So it's like you can click upon this arrow icon, go to the second image or come back to the first one. Now let's add a title. So I'm going to give it eye filter. And I've already opened the website in which I have like I'm having the description. So I'll copy that and paste it here. And then you can also give a link. So underneath this, you can give the link for the website. So I'll copy the link from here and I'll go back here and give the button URL. So, but it doesn't look good like showing half of the website link the www.todefl.paris. So you can give a button text. So that means it will show a text on the button. And when you click upon that button, it will redirect you to the website. So maybe I'm gonna give no more here. And that's it. Now, if you can see, you have an option of change icon. So in this, you have many icons and I just love this option because you can add so many icons and it looks good when it's popping up. So as it's a location, I'm going to add this location icon and then you can choose the kind of color combination you want. So let's choose this one. And then you have to click upon done. So then you can rearrange it, whatever you want. So as you can see, the Eiffel Tower is here. Maybe let's add it here only. Maybe here, just above it. And the next uh, is adding a text label. So just remember that you can keep it minimal because you cannot add more than uh, like 100 characters. So just like around one, two, three words and that's it. I'm going to write something in French. So Paris uh, incroyable. That means Paris is amazing. And I actually believe in that. And then you can give it an icon again. So for this time, I'm choosing this eye icon. And let's take this blue one. And then I'm adding it here just next to the cafe. And then done. Now let's add a content from a website. So some of you might be thinking only website. No, it's not like that. You can add dozens of things like a YouTube video or a Vimeo. You can also add content from like Google Maps and SlideShare and many more things. So you can read this for that and see what you can add. So I'm copying the link of the one of the video and I'm gonna paste it just so that it can be shown when it's opened. Yeah, so I now paste it here and then it'll get loaded and here's your video. Now as it's YouTube, so let's take a YouTube icon and maybe this red and white one and I'm keeping it just next to maybe this one icon. Yeah, and now you have one last thing that's create tour. So with this way you can connect one thing link to the other 
So I have a 360 degree sample with me. So I'm going to select the scene. So it will like show you some of the pre-made thing links which you have made. If it's not here, you can also upload it. And if you want it to be from one of the things you've created, then you can choose this. And then you can give it an icon. So let's give an image icon. Maybe this, because we've not chosen green till yet. So I'm taking this and click upon done. Now let's add this somewhere here. Yeah. And then done. Now just review your settings before you're finally done making your thing link. So as I make, I've made many thing links. So it wouldn't show me to allow animation. It will show disabled because I've always allowed the animation. So if you're creating for the first time, it might show like allow animation or not. So if you want to disable it, that's your wish. But like, I would recommend you to enable it because it like, it's like the person would know that where is it popping up and where he has to see. Another thing that is one of my favorite is the color scheme. So you can choose different kind of color schemes from here. Also, you can add your own HTML color codes here and change the color screen if you don't want one of these and then click upon done. You can also upload audio. I missed on that. So you can record it or also upload pre-recorded audio on either of the tags or on the entire thing link if you want. And when you're satisfied with what you've created, click upon done and then done once again. So it will load for you and you can see it looks pretty good. Here's the Paris A Incroyable. This is Alpha Tower. And when you click upon this, it will take me to this website and I can see the Eiffel Tower. Also, one of the amazing feature that is already inbuilt in ThingLink is the immersive reader. So it will automatically read it for you. And here's the YouTube video. And when you, you can watch it and then cross that. And this will take me to the other ThingLink. So I'll show you how it looks like. like this it looks nice and it's having all the locations and other things I, I feel like I'm already in that boat yes yeah, so I just close it and go back and now I'll tell you how you can share it so when you click upon share, you have dozens of options for what you can share it as. So it'll just open in a second. Now, if you want to embed the media or what you have created in one of the uh, icons, see so you can copy the code and embed that in one of the, like maybe in the YouTube video, you want to embed it there, that's your wish. And second is like you can share this link, you can create a shareable link, send it to your friends and tell them you can go and check out what I've made. And then you can also hide the link interface. That means it wouldn't be visible for the people. Next is you can also publish this to many platforms, including Microsoft Teams. And you can download it as an offline version. And next last option, is that you can donate it as a lesson. So if you want this to be used by students and teachers in their classes, you can choose the country, the level, subject, add a tag, and you can donate it. If not, close it. And now I'm going to uh, cross this. So I hope you have understood how we can create a thing link. Thank you so much. Wow, Nami, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You, um, not only are you knowledgeable, but you give great explanations. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, not only are you knowledgeable, but you give great explanations. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and, and um, as uh, Neha saying, great, great job. Three cheers for Namia. And so I, I think, you know, we're a little bit past time, but I thought it, it, might, it might be worthwhile. I guess uh, Monica and Amanda 
So if there were one or two things that you'd want people to take away from this session, um, I guess, Monica, what would you most want people to take away from this session? So I, I would just say uh, that uh, with this virtual quest, uh, what are we waiting for? That uh, we can, you know, uh, bridge our thinking link, thinking link with the help of this thing link. Yeah, I think so too. And Amanda? Yeah, I really like that. I would just say sign up for a free account, have a go. You can't break it. Um, just go and explore, go on an adventure with ThingLink and you will never look back. My brain literally doesn't stop. I need extra hours in the day for all the ThingLinks in my brain. Well, thank, thank you both. I think, you know, you, uh, I'd, I'd love to be a kid in your classes. Um, it's, it's got to be so much fun. So with that, I hope we see you at another EdChat Interactive. We'll be uh, having the schedule in the next few weeks. So we'll, we'll start scheduling some, some more sessions in January and February. Uh, we have one on Saturday. And uh, everybody, stay safe and have a very happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in here. And thank you, Mish. Thank you, Amanda, for sharing wonderful resources with all of us. I'm sure uh, our school teachers, they're having a, you know, kind of a resourceful time here uh, learning from you. You're very, very welcome. I'd just like to add um, anything I share, one of the things that you can do on ThingLink is to clone ThingLinks. So yeah. you can clone anything that I've shared, clone it, edit it, use it for yourself. Half the work is done if you can do that. Brilliant. And I'm always, always happy to help share, collaborate, and also magpie ideas. And I might just borrow Namia from you, Monica, because she sure. is amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, everybody, have, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, or whatever, wherever you are. Take care. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.